The story starts here in the heart of the city. We continue to follow the ongoing developments. The student group is the first to take on such a project. Everyone is waiting for a vote on the bill. The team is winning at a record-breaking pace. It's an issue for residents here and around Boston. The story is coming up on Suffolk U News. Hello and welcome to this edition of Suffolk U News, the weekly news program brought to you by the Department of Communication and Journalism at Suffolk University. I'm Davison Perez from Dedham. We're happy to be coming to you from our studio in downtown Boston, courtesy of our cable company and on the internet. Suffolk University is on the move, not only to expand, but also to give Beacon Hill residents some breathing room. Joining us here live in the studio is a reporter, Ash Ashley Cullinane. Ashley, how are the residents responding to the construction of 20 Somerset. So people are excited, of course. This is a shift from the Beacon Hill area more into downtown. So they're hoping the student traffic will lessen. Of course, that might lessen the tensions that Suffolk and Beacon Hill have had in the past. The Beacon Hill Civic Association already has plans for a new neighborhood. According to Beacon Hill officials, Donahue, Archer, and Fenton buildings will be converted into housing. The Ridgeway building will not go on the market anytime soon. University and community leaders say the move will be a big change for the better of everyone. Quite frankly, the residents of Temple Street are going to miss Suffolk University a little bit when we leave Temple Street. Um, they may not want to admit that, but I think some of them do feel that way. But in the end, I think it's better for the residents and better for the university to have that be returned to some perhaps residential use and to have us have a state-of-the-art academic building. To the residents, it will be perhaps a little bit less relevant um, as most of at least what we're envisioning is that the campus will not be as Beacon Hill oriented. According to the Civic Association, there are plans to put an underground parking garage below the Fenton and Archer buildings on Dern Street. Now, Davison, for the Ridgeway building, there are no plans in place just yet, but Mayor Lee Halpin tells me they're interested in making it a community center so kids could go downstairs, play in the gym, and then upstairs they could have some adult education classes. And you know, that's perfect for parents who are looking for a place to ha uh, house their children and have them, you know, play around in it. Yeah, of course, some babysitting time. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. Suffolk University and Beacon Hill leaders plan to discuss the sale of Ridgeway when a 10-year plan goes into effect in 2018. The counting is done, but the results are still not yet known. Last week, Mayor Marty Walsh and a group of volunteers counted the number of homeless people in Boston. As we wait, that number, a group of Tuffy University students is starting a movement to fight homelessness here in the city and beyond. Homelessness is seen around the city of Boston on a day-to-day -day basis. With the closing of the Long Island Bridge last year, more people find themselves without a place to stay at night. Executive Director of Spare Change News, Vincent Flanagan, believes there are young people out there who want to change that. I think young people who are socially conscious um, see the problem of poverty and homelessness and they want to do something about it. At Suffolk University, students are filming a documentary about the life of the co-founder of Spare Change News, James Shearer. They call themselves Voices of Homeless and they hope to raise awareness about homelessness through a visual showing of Shearer's life. We thought, you know, showcasing James' life, you know, working on showing James' life, all the things he's been through, making people, you know, really see it and understand it can directly relate to helping, you know, homelessness. The documentary will showcase all of the major events in James's life. Numero hopes the film will make homelessness more personal to those that watch it. I want to bring homelessness to your living room. I want you to ask yourself, like, if that's your father, that's your mother, that's your sister, that's your brother, what would you do? Shearer hopes Jeffrey is the next young leader to continue fighting homelessness. Homelessness needs young leaders because we've had People that have been fighting this well, fighting this fight, have been doing it for like years, you know, and a lot of us are tired, you know, and it's time for somebody else to, it's time for people to step up. Do you think Jeffrey could be that person? I think so. I hope so. Fundraising for the project is ongoing. There is no completion date for the documentary as of yet. An advocate for the Boston homeless is beginning a big role in the State Department this week. This is Dr. Monica Barul's first week as a state health commissioner. She previously served as the chief medical officer for Boston Healthcare for the homeless. Along with fighting homelessness, Barrow plans to lead efforts to tackle the drug 
addiction epidemic in the state and in healthcare reform. Updating our coverage of the university search for a new dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Maria Toyota interviewed on campus last week. She is currently an associate dean at Villanova University and holds a PhD from Georgetown University. Following her visit, Dr. Jeffrey DeLeo came to interview for the post. He is a dean at the University of Houston, Victoria and holds a PhD from Indiana University. The first candidate to come to campus was Dr. Patrice Rankine, currently a dean at Hope College in Michigan. He holds a PhD from Yale University. The Suffolk Search Committee hopes to have a new dean hired by the start of the new school year. On another campus, a party at Boston University fraternity was over before it even started. Kappa Sigma is now suspended after promoting a party with a video that university officials say endorses a culture of sexual violence against women. Here at Suffolk University, Greek life is still growing with one fraternity and sorority on campus. They say with actions like this from neighboring chapters, it sets them back from growing themselves. As soon as one fraternity around the nation does something, it gives every fraternity around the nation a bad rep, especially now that's in Boston. We are made up of such phenomenal women that it's incredible, and I wish people would sort of like associate that kind of reputation with Greek life, whereas like a lot of people, like I said, it's, it's masked by like all these like crazy stories that you hear from like all these different, you know, organizations all across the country. Back at BU, Kappa Sigma will be unable to recruit new members, sponsor activities, or use university facilities while suspended. The fraternity may appeal those penalties this summer. Another two inches of snow were added to Boston's snow totals on Wednesday night. City officials and residents hope the snow piles won't affect St. Southeast St. Patrick's Day Parade. Find out whether or not the luck of the Irish will ensure all roads are clear for the big day. Also, our very own Suffolk News reporter Vanessa Bine has this story that Our harsh winter has caused a drop in temperature and a rise in electric bills. Coming up after the break, find out why NSTAR customers are getting shocked by their bills. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. The snow has stopped for now, but bitter cold temperatures are still in our forecast. For NSTAR customers, this news is bad news. Suffolk News reporter Vanessa Bine explains why many NSTAR customers are being left in the cold. This year's record-breaking temperatures have caused residents to bundle up outside, but high electricity rates are causing NSTAR customers to bundle up inside. When I opened up my bill, it was $315. And I was shocked because our electric bill has never, ever been that high. Seeing 650 on your this, this past month was just, yeah, ridiculous. NSTAR customers like Margo and Linda have noticed a spike in their bills as NSTAR increased electric rates by 29%. Rates rose from 9.3 cents per kilowatt hour last year to 15 cents this year. As oil prices go down, electric rates go up. Providers like NSTAR did send out a mailing to customers saying that there were going to be an increase in rates, but some customers don't believe that one notice was enough. When we moved into our apartment, they encouraged us to do all of our billing online, so we get emails. So we didn't get any sort of paper notification or an online notification verifying that there was going to be an increase in the pricing. NSTAR representative Rhiannon D'Angelo claims customers were directly notified through bill inserts, electronic messages, and a special December 2014 mailing focused on the new basic service pricing, but wouldn't comment on what these electronic messages specifically were. NSTAR encourages customers to lower their heat at night, cover drafty areas, and to use blankets to lower heating bills, but these are all things Linda is already doing. We do all that. We do all the window coverings, like this plastic stuff. We do that and we keep it at 68 
And Star did not comment on whether or not electric rates will increase again anytime soon, but natural gas prices will increase next year. Vanessa Bine, Suffolk U News. And Star customers can take an online electricity assessment to see what changes they can make around the house to save money. And Star also has a payment plan for those that need assistance. If you still have snow around your business or residence, you had better clean it up. Mayor Marty Walsh has proposed a new home rule petition which would increase the cap on fines for snow removal offenses from $300 to $1,500. If these fines go unpaid, the fine would be added to your property tax bills. In his press release, Mayor Marty Walsh urges city council members to push this legislation forward as soon as possible. And in and around Boston, the freezing temperatures this winter have caused some roofs to start leaking or collapsing completely. The Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency does not suggest completing the task on your own, but rather hiring professionals. For more information on roof safety precautions, type M-E-A-M-A -A in the search bar at mass.gov. Again, type M-E-M-A -A in the search bar at mass.gov. The St. Patrick's Day Parade will take place as planned on March 15th. City leaders met with parade organizers on Monday afternoon to talk about delaying the parade or changing the location due to the massive amounts of snow on the sidewalks along the parade route. Ultimately, the decision was made to keep the parade on the same date. However, there will be minor changes to the route, according to organizers. More than one million people are expected to travel to the Southie Parade. Suffolk University is one of many colleges that offer online courses as substitute for in-class sessions. Now more than ever, Suffolk is finding this online option helpful in making up so many snow days. Our Suffolk U News reporter, Eva Hernandez, did some extra credit to find out how professors are making up for lost time. A historic winter snowfall prompted the staff of the Center for Teaching and Scholarly Excellence at Suffolk University to devise a plan for those rainy days. The purpose of this workshop is really to help them think through different formats or structures that they could do to create lesson plans that would still keep their students learning. Um, we're calling it instructional continuity. The only thing seemingly continuous this winter has been the snow, but some professors took matters into their own hands. Was when we decided on the 9th that we would cancel, I emailed all the students and I said, hey, we're going to try to recover tomorrow and I'm going to put some materials together for you to go through on your own and end it with a really short assessment that you'll submit. The results took McDonald by surprise. I was thrilled because I woke up on Wednesday morning and out of 72 students, because this covered three sections of the same course that I teach, only five students had not submitted. Over here at the Suffolk University Law School, the recent troubles with the MBTA has forced law school administration to make the decision of recording all classes. Located on the third floor of the Suffolk Law School is the Information Technology Services Center, whose staff is responsible for recording all these classes, now as a requirement. Yeah, right now we're recording about, in the law school, we're recording about 65 to 70 classes a day. Down the hall, faculty have the option of recording classes in a studio located right in the Technology Services Information Center. Ever Hernandez, Suffolk U News. Law School Administration has not yet announced when it plans to stop recording all lectures. This week, our partners at the Suffolk Journal made their way over to New England School of Art Design to check out a sustainable green trade show. Reporter Abby Wilson explains what the trade show had to offer. I think the coolest part was they had this flooring that was really cheap and that like instead of having to wax it like you do for like school gymnasiums and stuff you just had to like sweep it basically it was low maintenance low cost to put in and low cost to maintain pick up the Suffolk Journal around campus this afternoon to find out more about the trade show and other stories that were published this week as snow continues to pile up along the sidewalks and streets a Massachusetts man is taking the opportunity to take some money Instead of seeing all of the snow melt, Kyle Waring opened a business selling the snow. If you haven't had enough of the snow from this record-breaking winter, you can purchase the packaged snow from ShipSnowYo.com. To those ordering from warmer climates, the rate for six pounds of snow is $89. That does it for this edition of Suffolk U News. I'm Davison Perez. Be sure to keep watching for our newscast coming to you from the school at the heart in the heart of the city. Goodbye.